So you want a mulberry plant or a mulberry shrub, but you don't want to have to pay any more for it. So today I'm going to be showing you how to propagate your mulberry plant from cuttings. And I'm also going to be, because here in Florida, growing mulberries is way easier than growing strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, and blueberries. I'm going to be answering all your questions about mulberry plants. So let's get going. Let's talk about how to propagate. Okay, let's answer Tara's question, which was, what's the best way to propagate? And for me, when it comes to the best, it's what's the easiest thing to do? What's the most likely to get me results fast with the least amount of effort? So there are other ways to go and do this. I'm not saying any of them are wrong. I'm just telling you the way that is the easiest and I have found to be successful. So what I do is mulberry plant. This is an everbearing mulberry. And I get a cutting using some just basic pruning shears that is six to 12 inches long. What I'm looking for when I'm looking for that six to 12 inches is I like to go for thin stems. You can see this is relatively thin and it has just made a transition from being more of this green stem. And you can see on the stem, even though it's brownish in color, when I get my hand behind it, you notice there's still a very slight green tinge to it. This is what I found have been the best at taking off really quickly because the faster you establish roots, the faster you're getting your mulberry plant growing and the sooner we're getting to fruit. Okay, we're now at the location where we wanna go put our mulberry cutting. You could do this in a pot. I just like to go put them directly wherever they're gonna go. And here we have some cuttings that I already put in the ground a couple weeks ago. So there's actually one here and one right here. Now they look very sad. They, when I propagate them, I will leave one to maybe three leaves on it at most. They'll drop off, not a big deal. I do that more so I just can find the plant. And I usually put a stake because I put them in the ground and <laughs> you could accidentally mow over them. So here we have, these ones are about two weeks old. Now, one of the questions I always have when I go and propagate things is, is it dead? Because let's not keep using resources. And here's a great way. So once you get this in the ground, it's going for a couple weeks. If we pull back this mulch just slightly, all I did was I made sure that I stuck it in a hole in the ground and at least half of this six inches is in the ground. So if you make it a 12 inch, put it six inches in the ground. If it's six inches, put three inches in the ground. So on. But if we look down here, behind the mulch, get a little bit of sun in there, you can see that at two weeks old, this is now turning green. And that means that it's getting enough water, nutrition, that it is still alive and growing. And that will allow it to set roots. Now this piece was actually a 12 incher, and I put it probably about eight inches in the ground. Now the one behind it, which was smaller, and this is why I encourage you to go with smaller, you can see that at two weeks, we are already getting new buds that will make leaves. So here you can see within just two weeks, we went from having a stick in the ground to the beginnings of our first leaves. Once you get that stick in the ground, you wanna make sure that the ground maintains moist environment because that's what's gonna get it to continue to try to grow and set roots. I didn't use any rooting agents, anything. I literally just put the sticks, the cuttings into the ground. That's it made sure it stayed water, put a little bit of mulch around it, put a stake there just so I know so we don't mow it over because we did about a few weeks ago. <laughs> After a month of having a leaf on there, if that plant is still going, you do not need to fuss over it any longer. Let your sprinklers hit it or make sure it's water probably about twice a week and it'll be fine. Now, when it comes to growing, those were just two weeks old and this was made from a cutting about one year ago. So you can see it's already gotten really tall. It's already taller than me, almost six feet tall. It's gone through its first winter and we're heading into our second winter, which is why you can see a few of these leaves are looking a little sad. So let's get into one of our first questions, which is from Gidget. She says, in Virginia, we have mulberry trees. And I mean trees, big towering trees. Everything I've seen down here looks more like bushes. Are we talking a different variety, a different species or just young trees? Well, the answer is maybe to all those questions, because the thing is, is that there are over 20 species of mulberries and they grow all around the world, but a whole bunch of them come from Southeast Asia down into India. And here in Florida, we can grow a lot of those different types of species. So it may depend. You may be actually seeing a bush type of mulberry, or you may be seeing some young trees. Our next question is from Greta and she asks, what's the best type of mulberry for Florida? Well, of course, you know what my answer is gonna be. It's gonna be the native type of mulberry. And yes, here in Florida, we do have a native variety to Florida, which is really exciting. 
actually there is varieties and uh, species that are native to the eastern portion of the Americas. So all the way from zone 5 down here into zone 10 and over into Midwest and down to Texas. So that's really exciting that you too could be having. Now there are different varieties and there is a type that's actually native to Florida. I do not have that type. What I have is a different variety, but it is still native to the Americas. This is the ever, ever bearing mulberry. It's the dwarf variety. This question's from Cynthia. She asks, can I keep them pruned into bush form? I don't have space for a large tree. Well, you can see here is one of our ever bearing mulberry dwarf ones and it's tall. Like it's kind of tall. It's heading on to the almost 20 foot range. So could you keep it as a shrub? Yes, a very large shrub. So this would be kind of, I would say you could push it to the size of like one of our larger fire bushes into that 10, 12 foot range. This is not gonna be a four foot shrub. I would not recommend it for something like that. So the next question comes from Just Keep Planting with Nemo, which I love your name. Um, I don't think I've ever told you that, but every time you post, I'm always like, ha, I like it. Um, so not really a question, but wondering your opinion on different types of mulberries. I've only had what I think are native red mulberries my whole life. What is your favorite mulberry? Do you think it's worth growing the dwarf mulberry being sold in stores? So short answer, I totally think it's worth it to grow the dwarf bear, ever bearing mulberry bushes. I think they have a really, really nice type. I have read that the native types are just not as flavorful and I'm guessing they're not quite as juicy as the native types that come outside, the non-native to Florida, but native to the United States type. These, I love, I love. And what I'll actually compare it more to, because I think it's not just a decision about type of mulberry, because there's lots of different types and you know, it's great. There's some exotic fruit shops, which will actually do like taste testings when they have them in season. Is I just compare it more to raspberries and blackberries. They kind of have a flavor that I would say is kind of halfway in between. They've got some of the bite and tartness that you really get out of blackberries, but they don't have that annoying center that blackberries can have. Um, I would say the more of a difference that I've heard is texture difference more than flavor when it comes to different sizes. Early in the season, late in the season for my type of mulberries, I would say the texture is, meh. it's not as like nice and juicy and plump. But overall, I would say I am very happy with my dwarf ever bearing mulberries. So I highly recommend them. I think they're a lot of flavor and you get a lot of fruit for a very small space and definitely easier because I've tried blueberries and they are such a pain to get going. So Maria P asks, would the fruit stain a concrete driveway? And then she asks more questions. So let me first start with the concrete driveway part. It might, I have read this a lot online. I have a concrete sidewalk right below these mulberry plants and mulberries fall on them all the time we step on them we squish them on accident or my kids on purpose and i would tell you yeah you notice little stains but then the rain comes and then 90 percent of it washes away now i don't have a pristine sidewalk so like would it maybe leave some residual possibly but even having getting stains on my hands, like you can have like really dark stains on your hands and within a few minutes of washing, most of it comes off. And now to get to your other question. So the other part of Maria's question is, are they a runner, cane, bush, or clumping type? Thanks, looking forward to your video. Oh, thanks Maria. Okay, so let's just go down and look. <laughs> so you can see, so no, no, there are no runners. I don't do anything in here. Okay, those are all oaks. So if you see little seedlings down here, that's really just from squirrels. It has nothing to do with this. <laughs> Um, but you can see it's got a large trunk. Um, it is still a shrub, um, but it doesn't get any canes. You don't need to do any of that like cane work like you would need to do with like a raspberry. No, the most of the pruning I do down here is just to get really lower branches out of my way. It's um, more out of, for me, than the plant. This question comes from Ange Lewis. How long until a very small tree will produce fruit, like two feet tall? Which is a great question because um, I had this one I had to go do some research and digging into my notes of when I planted things and then when did I actually get fruit because I do track that is um, okay so for two feet tall I'm gonna tell you it's gonna tell, depend a little bit on timing the big number is it takes one to three years for it to produce fruit I have found it will produce even faster when you do your own propagating and cuttings so when I got those two plants that are over in the mini food forest. We put those in in fall 2018. In spring of 2019, I got two pounds of food. By spring 2020, we got 29 pounds of mulberries. And then 2021, we got 33 in the spring and we've gotten like seven pounds since then. So we, within a year, already had mulberries. This, which I propagated last year from a cutting from our mulberry plant, I think I propagated it, I don't remember, sometime fall last year. 
when it hit spring this year, we did get like three mulberries on it. Was it like, oh my gosh, full harvest? No, but it did get it. So I think it really depends on when you get the plant and when it hits its first spring is more of the answer than necessarily one to three years. Now, some plants, depending on their sort of full tree type, probably would take longer. Shrubs probably are going a lot faster. The bush type probably goes a lot faster. Now, a, a thing I didn't know, and I remember talking about this with my friend Isabel, who also got mulberry plants recently, is that when you do get your first mulberries, like that first two pounds of mulberries, they're not great tasting. And I would tell you, it's more from the texture. They don't really get fully sweet. Um, they feel just really fibery in your mouth. So they're not as delicious as what I got the next year. So 2018, nothing because we weren't really in that season. 2019 was like, meh. When we got that first 29 pounds, those are when we started getting the mulberries. I was like, yes, this was a great choice. I'm so happy I did it. So just, I wanted to give you that extra detail because it was a difference that made a difference. So Mike was asking, any way to increase yield? We have a three old bush tree, which us too and we only see about 10 to 20 pounds a year. So I'm right with you because with 40 pounds this year, we're gonna end up with about 20 pounds per plant. It wasn't probably exact for each plant, but right about on course with yours. So kind of three different things you wanna think about. So for us, one of the reasons why I put some new plants in the backyard orchard is because the location of these do not allow me to maximize. Now, if you already have your plant, it kind of is what it is. We'll get into some other ideas next. But if you haven't, make sure that you put it in a place where you can access it from all the way around. For me, I can only access part of it because a bunch of the branches go into my neighbor's yard. So I am missing out on a bunch of yield. We have lost pounds of mulberries to the fact that these things fall off super easy. So when they are in full go season and you are picking one to two pounds of mulberries a day, tons are falling on the ground. So one of the things I'm gonna do differently this coming year to maximize what I already have is I'm gonna be getting some tarps to put down on the ground so that during the day when the wind is blowing, they can get knocked on the ground and then we can pick them up and get the ones that the ants haven't gotten to yet. And that's the way we're gonna start increasing our yield. Cause you, when we harvest, like you just gently touch them and they start like Pugh. But the other thing is, is that you can prune. Um, I have not done like a hard, hard prune and I am still testing my way into this, but I have tested it. Well, one, I had to prune anyways because they went over the sidewalk and I can't keep walking through a jungle in my yard. Um, but I have done sections where I have pruned back some of the smaller branches and have found that those areas do put on new berries relatively quickly. So pruning does instigate, instigate, it stimulates, it encourages the plant to put on some more berries, especially if you have like an ever bearing mulberry because they do put on multiple fruit sets a year versus like some of the large tree types probably only put on one type, a, one time a year and then they're kind of done with their flesh. So pruning would be the third way that you could do it. To test this out before you just like go cut the plant like I would just take a section and that's really how I've tested it this year is I just took one section and I kind of took it back by 25% and then I watched what was going to happen. So next year I feel more comfortable once we get, we've got another fruit set that came on um, here late fall. So I will do a harder prune as we go into the winter months and to try to stimulate even more production and we'll see how that goes next year. So our next question comes from Joanne. She asks, can you keep them in a pot and they'll still produce? So, and she's got some more questions. So let's answer the first one. So um, based on all the mulberry types that I have looked up in the past, I don't think any type's gonna do well in a pot, even a really, really large pot. I think if you're wanting berries and you're really gonna be contained to a pot, you could go with something different like a blueberry bush and get better results. So this would not be a one-to-one -one trade that I would do um, for putting in a pot. But let's go on with some of your other questions, which is how much shade or sun do they need? So mulberry plants like full sun and they can go into a semi-shade. So when these were planted here, this is a semi-shade because during the, east, the eastern part of the day, the early part of the day, the house kind of shades out the ground area. They've really taken off since they can get more sun because they're clearing the roof line a lot more, um, but they will prefer full sun. They can deal with semi-shade, no problems. And so for like a food forest, this is really good for not your canopy layer, but your small tree to uh, high shrub layer. Joanne also asks, best way to propagate them and is pruning necessary? We've already answered the propagation part and is pruning necessary? So there are whole sections that I have never pruned and they still produce berries. The watch out is, is that, you know, they produce the berries on the small stick stems. Let's say it that way. Um, so the more they have of that, 
the more of that type of growth, the more berries you're gonna get. What I'm gonna be doing next year is I'm gonna probably be doing like a good prune twice a year. So let it do its spring flush, push it back, and then let it go through fall flush and then knock it back again. So Mickey Mai again asks, when is the best time to transplant from a large pot to ground and how to prep hole? I would say the best time is always, I would do spring, summer, and early fall. I wouldn't go into late fall or winter because you want to make sure those roots are set before we hit the winter time. Um, if you're in a large pot, the way you would want to prep the hole is you want to <laughs> dig out the area. I mean, what they would always tell you is you're supposed to kind of do like twice the size of the pot and um, is best for allowing roots to go and spread. I have done a lot of plants where I've not done that. And I'm sure someone will tell me that I'm very, very wrong for doing it, but it's not like you're gonna kill the plant from not giving it like a giant hole to put it in. Will it maybe set a little bit faster? Maybe, I don't, it don't you don't have to. Um, I like to transplant things when they're a lot younger because the younger they are when they set their roots, especially things that have like nice deep tap roots that though I don't think these ones necessarily do, um, you can, the better they do in the long run. Aaron T asks, I recently bought a roughly seven foot twig of a mulberry tree from my local nursery. It had like six leaves on it. And the guy assured me that it was totally normal because they're deciduous. So they drop all their leaves in the winter. Do they lose all their leaves? Is that normal? That is a great question because that was something that took me by surprise the first year I have it. Cause I was like, is it dying? So yes, similar. I have a six foot twig, just like you. And actually what you can see here is one, something that surprised me when I first got a mulberry is that I would start seeing holes in leaves. Um, actually different insects and animals do eat mulberry leaves. I think you see this a lot more in permaculture is they feed mulberry leaves to things like goats and sheep and whatever. Um, but yes, let's take a look down here because I think it's way more obvious than my big ones. But yes, they do start to change colors. It is totally normal for them to start changing colors as the temperatures start to drop. And they will drop a whole bunch of their leaves in the winter. That is absolutely completely normal. I would say if you're living in zone nine or 10, they may not lose all of their leaves. They may still have some sad looking leaves that look kind of burnt, rust stained. That's, that's just normal. That's, what's, that's the season. Um, and then once basically what happened is, is right in the spring when it starts to warm up again, um, or late winter here in Florida. Um, they'll drop these leaves and they'll put on a whole new fresh set. They'll be nice and bright and green, but it is not unusual also to see this sometimes even in the summertime. As the heat gets really hot, you will see signs of stress on them. They're still fine. They'll still make berries in the fall. They're just not in their like ideal happy spot and that's okay. One of the tricks I've developed in the years um, is I try to figure out plants that are similar that aren't in my yard <laughs> or are in my yard that do really well to know whether a plant's having a problem or not. So when it comes to mulberries, I pay attention a lot to crepe myrtles. Crepe myrtles are not native to the United States, but they have a very similar um, cycle they go through throughout the year as your, crepe, as your mulberry plants. So, and I only bring up crepe myrtles because like go to Publix, you see them in the parking lot. You go and you're driving down the street, they're along the roadside. So they're really easy to notice. A lot of times they're like around businesses and people's houses. Um, so I bring that up because you have lots of other, an, another plant that you can watch what's happening with their leaves. And if it's very similar timing as what's happening with your mulberry plant, then your mulberry plant's fine. Because there's days where I'm like, is it really that cold? Why is it already looking sad? Apparently it is because the, uh, the crepe myrtles are also dropping their leaves and starting to look really similar right now. So use crepe myrtles as a way to know like, is it me or is it just the season? And that brings us to our next question from Samalita007. Okay, my mulberry sad. I mean, yellowing leaves in the center, leaves losing mass. It started doing this since the beginning of October. And I think the real big question, Samalita, is um, depending on where you're living, especially if you're one of my Floridians who watches, if you're up in that zone in eight or nine, I wouldn't be surprised that you're getting that. And you can see there's lots of like leaves losing pieces. That's usually from some sort of um, insect that's eating it. And yeah, you'll get that yellowish look. So because we had a much cooler October, this doesn't surprise me. So if this is your first year with it, you're okay. Just keep on going. Just let it keep growing. So Melissa is asking, I'm just west of Gainesville. I planted a black mulberry three years ago. It got to four feet and stopped. Okay. The leaves are very small, but they look healthy. I thought of doing a hard prune this winter. See what happens. Any ideas? My first thought was, is are we sure we have a mulberry? Cause the leaves don't tend to be very small. I mean, new leaves are, 
but most of the leaves you can see, I mean, they eventually get pretty big. So, and I know the ones that come out of like Southeast Asia get really big. So I'm not sure on this one. And if you have an idea, can we help? Um, can we help Melissa out and put a comment down below? Oh, and actually with any of the questions I've asked today, if you've got experience with your own mulberry, share the differences or what's the same for you because different areas, different types might have different answers. And I always love, you guys are great about that. Like just share down below in the comments, any differences, but I'm not sure. Um, it just sounds like it's too small. <laughs> It sounds too small, so I don't know of any variety that's like that. So let's help Melissa out. Put your answers in the comments down below. So C. Reaver asks, what do you do with the fruit? So for me personally, we eat them fresh and we freeze them. I did some calculations, I think late last year, and I estimated that we use in our family about 175 pounds of berries in a year, which is crazy a lot. Um, that's the reason I've been now adding more and more mulberry plants to the backyard orchard or actually I started the backyard orchard specifically because I wanted to add more mulberry trees because we need to make a lot more mulberries if we want to stop buying them from the stores. And if you know, berries are expensive, especially per pound. So, um, but generally speaking, if you don't want to just eat them fresh or frozen, using them like things like smoothies and stuff like that, you know, anything that you would do with a blackberry or raspberry from jellies, jams, pies, compotes, it's all the same. Honestly, they are, they t they're right in between a raspberry or a blackberry. That's exactly where I put the flavor profile and texture wise. Um, I wouldn't say they're as plump and juicy as what you get at the store for a raspberry or blackberry, but they're not far off. I hope you found this helpful in your journey with mulberry plants. And if you have questions about what to grow and when to grow it for here in Florida, go ahead and get your free seasonal gardening calendar from www.wildfloridian.net slash calendar. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.